Hi everyone, this is another rough cut of an old session that I've had. Hopefully this might be of help to you. Workbook. You have this one on page 54. This is a rather complicated cut. You can practice that in your workbook for exam practice. And then you will ask me, but sir, why don't this one have a cut? There's enough corners and angles and measurements and all kinds of other stuff that needs to be done. That's why this particular one is just to give you that exposure, and especially with the isometric circles, as well as with the octagon that's over here on the basis. And then obviously they have given you the auxiliary view. Now, obviously you won't get the answer, but you will get these three views. Now, all of you know by now that this is our third angle orthographic projection symbol. It's here at the bottom. And we all know that in, if that is our projection symbol, we know with the layout of the views as they are given here, this can be nothing other than our top view, our front view, and then the left view in third angle. Normally, we would expect the right view in third angle. However, because they want to try and test your ability and understanding to do first and third angle drawings, the testing your understanding is if the left view is given here, that you don't now go and say that this is actually your front view and because there's no top view above it. When we start with our isometric drawing, apart now from identifying the symbol, which is our first step, and then identifying the different views that are presented to us. We obviously need to go and read the question and make sure that we understand what is it that is actually asked within the drawing itself. And once we know that, we must just go and check. When it's a sectional cut, we look at page 54. We've identified the views. We know that it is an isometric drawing, obviously. But now, sometimes when it is given to us, we have to make sure whether it's a half section, which is this example. But if it's a full section, you all know that it will go right through the whole of the top view. And then that would have meant that we'd have cut from left to right all the way, even through the cylinder on this model everywhere. Okay, the chances that they will ever do a cut through uh, another place other than the center of a cylinder is very slim, okay? because that just makes things a little bit more tricky and time consuming, although the process is exactly the same. I know you all will be able to do it, but let's just quickly look at that. Say, for instance, in this case, it was a full section that right, went right through on the center line all the way on the top view from left to right. We obviously would have seen just continued with this cut as we see it here and take it through this diagonal part, but also right through the middle of the cylinder. But what if it was that this center line or the sectional cut was dropped just about 10 millimeters forward? What would you have done then with the hexagon in this case and then with the circle? Anybody that could give me an answer on what would be your solution if there was a sectional cut, let's say a full section, that was just 10 millimeters in front of where it is now. Let me add to that question. If it was central, if you would just continue with the cut and not add this front section that is part of the uh, whole section, but you would have made a full section right through the center and you would have just here at the cylinder on the center line have brought the cut down to its base and then diagonally across. If it's moved either 10 millimeters forward of the center or backwards from the center, the question there is what would you do different or uh, what would your approach be if that cut wasn't on the center? I would still get the center line, so and then just work from the center point with the 10 millimeters to the distance that we gave us, and then make my cutting plan there. Perfect. And would it change anything on your constructions? No, sir, it wouldn't. That's the answer I was looking for. I hope everybody else has heard his answer, so he has the right approach. Whether or not the cutting plane AA was brought backwards or forwards from the existing center line, it wouldn't change your approach to how you do the drawing itself. So all that you would have done if we were to do 10 millimeters forward, we would have gone from the center point, make the mark of 10 millimeters in front of that central line, and then you would have just drawn a light construction line at first to get the position of where the cut will be here on the edge of the cylinder and on that cylinder. And then you know, okay, those are my orientation points. Make that cut solid 
bring it down all the way to the base of that. And then you might even have a little bit of this corner here between the cylinder base and the diagonal edge that would have been visible. And then you would see the cut going down over there. And your hexagon would, instead of being now on the center line, you would have seen the cut there to there but just now, obviously, on your isometric drawing here. I hope that makes sense. Just be mindful of that. I've never seen that being asked in an exam. Let's go back to page 56. This one here is page 57. Please keep in mind this page 57 is a very good one that you can practice. I just want to make sure you guys notice a few things. It's third angle as per normal. We have our top, our front, and our right view. And then we also have a quarter cut. And then we also have a square. On your workbooks, you will see there's a little square ahead of the 15 dimension. Now, I think you guys are all aware that when you see that, it means that the square is a 15 by 15 dimension. And you all know that with a sectional cut in a half section like this, uh, we always have where the cut goes, a little darkening of that corner there. We also have the darkening of the tips of the cutting uh, section at the start and the end. And we have to show the arrows and we have to show the S. So you just have to draw the center lines, the constructions and your answer, obviously. So uh, you wouldn't need to show the cutting plane in your answer. Then with the squares, take a close look at the answer here. When we look at the square, now this here is technically supposed to be center lines because it's a symmetrical shape. And remember center lines, the rule of a center line is that we apply it with all arcs, with all circles, with all symmetrical shapes, and so on. Please note also that with your auxiliary, again, you have to box it. You don't have to draw the full hexagon. You know this by now. You only have to draw one half of it, but the square you have to draw. For those of you who were still wondering or pondering the construction of a square when it is like a diamond, in other words, tilted at 45 degrees, please remember you first draw the center lines. We'll take that diameter of square, which is 15, and you will take your compass and place it in the center, stretch to seven and a half, because that's the half of 15, so that you can get to the diameter of 15. I know this is grade 10 stuff that I'm discussing. From the center, you're gonna take that 15, half it to seven and a half, draw the light construction circle, and then we just draw the 45 degree lines of the edges of that square. And that's how you determine the square at an angle of 45 degrees. This obviously is going to count a lot of marks every time. And in all your drawings, you will have a circle and you will most likely have a cut and you will have a hexagon or a pentagon or an octagon and you will have a square sometimes or triangles. So those basic shapes you will also always have.